Good evening, everyone. So this is uh, my uh, pick and place machine, finally ready for placement of uh, Spartan 6 uh, ball grid array part. This is a uh, here double-sided scorch tape. So when part comes down to the board, doesn't slide. Usually this won't happen because there is a solder paste once the board is ready for uh, assembly. But for now, I'm using just a double-sided tape uh, so we can test the accuracy. So board goes here. This is, um, usually there is a conveyor belt uh, here in the factory, so board comes automatically. Um, the length of the board uh, or width, however you look at it, is set in the software, so much machine will adjust the, the length, let's say. And um, here, inside of the machine, we have all these uh, feeders here, but uh, we're not going to use this right now. The only thing that we will mount, uh, because this is just a prototype, is uh, this part here that's uh, sitting here on uh, this uh, tray. And you will forgive the look of the tray. This is all improvised by me and kind of looks messy, but... Uh, it does the job and I have here one Spartan 6 sitting uh, and kind of fits here pretty well. And then once we start, the board will come in here uh, and uh, the pick number one will place the component. Uh, this is the head uh, with eight uh, picks, so we'll use just the first one because, because it has appropriate uh, size. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what's going to happen. So without further ado, I can start the whole process. The board will come inside. And then uh, once uh, machine grabs the board, it will do the fiducial marks and then do the calibration and then, perfect. There you go. It's all done, it takes only a couple of seconds. So if you look at the chip here, everything is within these uh, white lines. The lighting here is not the best, so maybe I can get here close to the, to the lights so you can see it better. It's all within the parameter. It's quite precise, um, if needed, I can uh, use tweezers to kind of move uh, part for the micrometer here and there, but um, as of now, it's fairly precise. I wouldn't even dare, uh, but um, there is also a little bit of tolerance because there is um, adhesive forces uh, when uh, this board goes into the reflow oven and these forces, while the oven is melting, the solder will pull the pins right in place. So. Uh, if it's within, I don't know how many micrometers or whatever the unit is, uh, it will still kind of sit on the right place. Um, after everything said and done, it will be pulled, um, the part itself. But uh, when it comes to BGAs, the precision is your friend. And uh, I insist that everything is within uh, these white lines. And if you see white lines here at the corner, that's a good thing. Um, of course, before going to reflow, I will triple check everything. Um, and uh, I think we're on the good path to solder this part uh, without uh, much of the issues using my machine. So yeah, that's, that's about that. Uh, later, once this is done, the prototyping, I mean, then we will uh, set a machine to use all these components and place everything automatically, of course. That's the whole idea. But for now, I'm going to place all the other components manually. This is the one that I'm interested in at the moment, just to make sure it's sitting where it's supposed to be without smudging or, you know, creating some sort, some sort of uh, uh, shorts between these little uh, balls uh, of, uh, for the um, ball grid array here. And uh, after this is uh, done, 
uh, everything is going, I mean everything, the board is going to the reflow oven here. And uh, this is my little Neoden reflow oven. It's a small oven, but uh, for the amount of units I'm using, the number of units I'm producing, it's quite okay. Uh, before all of this, even before placing the uh, the Spartan chip, uh, board goes to uh, to, st to stencil printer. Um, it goes behind, below this stencil printer, and then this machine is semi-automatic. It will bring a stencil down and use this part to um, put the solder uh, because there is a little bit of uh, holes here. And these holes will just uh, leave uh, the solder uh, paste where it's supposed to be. Uh, this is uh, actually for the, uh, for the lower part of the board, for the bottom. I already use this, although this is not the best way to position the stencil next time I will make sure it's rotated differently this is kind of very narrow but uh, long story short uh, this is typical stencil printer that you can find in Chinese factories uh, for uh, SMT uh, assembly um, and uh, this is called the semi-automatic because there is no conveyor belt you put the you will put the board manually yourself, but once that's done, once you press these two buttons at the same time, the whole process will happen automatically. And I will actually show you this uh, in a second once I set up the stencil and everything. It's quite interesting and uh, quite a quite fast process of applying this uh, solder. Solder paste, I'm using T5 for this in hope that uh, the best uh, solder uh, paste uh, will produce the best results and this is uh, I think for this fine pitch uh, T5 works fine so stay tuned uh, next video will be solder actually maybe not next video I should probably continue this in the next clip uh, within the same video uh, and um, perhaps we can finish the assembly today okay so this is initial adjustment as you can see the board is behind and all the pads are in place. There's no a lot of empty space or not at all. So the stencil is flat and sitting nicely on the board, on the PCB. So next step is to put the solder paste. All right, we have paste on the stencil. It's a decent amount then I'm going to do this manually, not even semi-automatic. I will put the knife down and then I will do the printing. Okay. This looks very good. That's it. And uh, let's check uh, the print under the microscope. Le microscope. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, now I'm in my lab and this is my cheapo microscope. And let's see how this looks like. Okay, not too bad. The thing that interests me the most is the ball grid arrays. And you can see the solder paste sitting well. There's a little bit of gap, which is totally, totally fine. But uh, I need to go very carefully through every single ball and look at it and assess that everything's all right but uh, i mean the stencil printer itself is quite accurate and i after quite a few years of using it i know how to set up everything to make sure there's no um, gaps or anything so application is good other stuff interests me less i mean this is whatever i mean this is fine it's a little bit on the upside but that's this is so going to um, be attracted to the um, to the copper area that doesn't really matter this is basically perfect but uh, these uh, little balls so far so good I mean they look fantastic I must say I'm quite optimistic so close up like this yeah this is I believe 35 inch screen so it's quite big I can see everything. Maybe I can even go a little bit back like this. I 
let's see. Oh, this is the furthest I can go. Okay. I can we it now? Not really. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to stop filming and check every single uh, ball, but uh, so far preliminary seems to be okay. So next clip will be pick and place machine slapping uh, down this um, Spartan 6 and uh, then I'll place all the other components manually and we're in business. Okay, I have board inside, uh, paste is uh, up applied on the PCB. And then let's start. Fiducial marks, second fiducial mark, seems okay. Let's measure it, measuring, good, placed, done. Okay, so this was this time for real. There we go, let's take a look. We can go again into my basement lab to double check the positioning and see if I need to touch a little bit the part left or right, but so far looks promising. Okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, I see white line, I see white line on this side. I see white line, so yeah, looks good. And it's done by pick and place machine, so I don't think I can do better than this. I mean, this is, this should be Legge Artris, I think. Let's go downstairs and uh, double check. Okay, now checking the placement. So this is upper right corner, upper left corner, lower left corner, and lower right corner. I mean, I, I couldn't do it better. I mean, this is, this is about that. Let's do it with the camera like this from the top. Looks like it's hitting pretty well. Without any intervention moving this part or anything. This is how machine did it and uh, looks very valid. Okay, so now I will need about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to place all the components manually before going into the reflow oven. And we'll go from there. And to the oven we go. It's going to take about a few minutes. All right, good stuff. A new computer is born. Uh, finally, I have uh, Amicube V1 fully assembled. I've added uh, manually uh, through hole components uh, and uh, I've tested everything. There's no shorts um, and uh, I was able, as you can see here, the LED is blinking. I was able to program ARM firmware to uh, wait and expect for FPGA core from SD card. If I put a uh, properly formatted SD card with the core, it will uh, start pushing the core to um, the FPGA. Uh, I won't do that right now because I need to change um, code and software Verilog extensively. Um, less so Verilog, more so uh, constraint files, constraints um, for this particular chip because even though uh, this looks like a Minimig, we are not in the same realm anymore. This is a different uh, platform, different chip uh, and uh, some adjustments are required before I can just um, start uh, playing, uh, I don't know, Alien Breed or Super Frog. So now in next day, I will um, start working on the software. I think I should have done this before uh, so we can test right away. I'm quite uh, excited and um, impatient. I would like to test everything right away. But when it comes to these um, prototypes and the hardware development uh, in general, patience is a virtue. So I will just take my time, um, do one line of the code at a time, make sure I'm not making mistake, <clears throat> mistakes and uh, go from there. Hopefully within um, maybe day or two, I'll have something that's uh, functional. 
After that's done, then a uh, couple of other things are required. Uh, I need to connect my uh, new module, uh, floppy disk module, and integrate that into the new core. I also will start working on the firmware changes because in ARM, because I want to make sure I can use the real floppy and uh, ADF files at the same time. I want to explore virtual CPUs, if I can add O20 to the existing core, that would be great. So I can choose to use real CPU and um, one in FPGA. And then of course, holy grail is to port entire AJ core, which will take a little bit more time, uh, considering that this is uh, not really compatible with Mr. or Mist. We have um, some differences in design and um, some recoding will be uh, required, uh, necessary. Uh, one thing that I um, I have on the other side here um, inverters. So let me just flip this like that, like that. So these are inverters for uh, for these LEDs, but because I connected them wrongly, yeah, the wrong way, instead of the, to the ground, I connected them to um, VCC. They will still work, but they will show um, active low. They will behave as active low signals, which is fine. I can still use them, uh, but I need to correct this error in the next iteration of the board because I was really particular not to look at the active level, but to invert the signals. Uh, obviously, this time that's not going to be the case um, since I made the schematic error, schematic error, but it's fine. It's a minimal problem. Uh, and uh, what else to say? I mean, um, so far so good. Uh, the components are... the the. Temperature is good. There's nothing overheating. I've checked all the voltages. I've checked continuity to pretty good extent, make, making sure that there's no, as I said, sh um, short circuit somewhere or um, some sort of um, voltages that are um, out of specs. Everything is indicating that so far that uh, we have a working computer now. Uh, let's uh, let's set up the software and uh, see what will happen once I have a uh, running core, once I push running core to Spartan 6. Give me a few days and I think we'll have something. Again, thanks uh, for watching and staying around. Uh, this was a quite a journey, I think. Uh, now you have uh, probably good feeling and a good idea about the whole development process uh, from you know starting working on the schematics and uh, uh, prototyping the designing the board the assembling and um, there will be more to come of course but um, uh, i'm really glad i have um, you on the other side as, uh, to kind of accompany me in this journey which is uh, really a fantastic journey and i don't know there's something about these uh, bgas they look so Fantastic. I mean, this feels like a modern computer, and uh, it's such a such a big difference to. Uh, I mean, aesthetics to me is kind of important, and uh, it just feels sexy. I don't know if I can say that. It's it's very nice. So therefore, I'm looking forward to see uh, AJ Core running here. Um, that will be another milestone. Subscribe because. Um, I will have more videos uh, coming, so if you want to be up to date and not to miss any uh, interesting um, progress happening, I'll, I'll have something almost daily. Make sure you are subscribed and um, you have that uh, notification, uh, whatever it is, the bell uh, icon activated. And uh, I'll make sure yeah, uh, there will be more content, interesting content coming in the next uh, few days. Again, thanks for watching and uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.